Hey everyone, this week I'm sharing five tips for nighttime low light photography. So light is a key factor in capturing photography, you can't really have photography without it. But even in low light conditions such as nighttime, you can still get some decent images if you know what you're doing. This evening I've come out to Leeds and I'm going to have a little wander around the city centre, see what images I can capture and along the way I'm going to be sharing some tips on how you can really maximise your chances of getting good images when it's night time or low light. Okay, so tip number one is use the most optimal gear possible. I've brought out the Nikon Z7 with me today. That's fantastic in low light. It's got a full frame sensor, and the larger your sensor, the better it is for low light. That doesn't mean you can't use crop sensor or even micro four thirds, but you are gonna get best results from a larger sensor. Also, if you've got in-body stabilization, that's a bonus as well. This is particularly helpful if you're shooting handheld, because you're gonna to have to be using fairly slow shutter speeds to get the light into the camera, and you're gonna struggle to get those really sharp images. So any help you've got in the camera or in the lens with vibration reduction or in-body stabilization is really gonna help. When it comes to lenses, choose the ones that have got the widest maximum aperture if possible. I brought with me the Nikkor 50mm 1.8 Z lens. Obviously that's got a really wide maximum aperture. I won't necessarily always be using it at the widest, but if I need to, I've got it there. And also a 50mm is really useful, it's a general focal length which is really good around cities and things like that. So I'm gonna crack on and see what other images I can get. So regardless of the equipment that you're using, you can still get good images by altering the settings in your camera. And there are three main ways that you can get more light into your camera. So this is the exposure triangle. I've covered this before. I'll put a link up top to the video where I've covered this in greater detail. But basically you can get more light into your camera by either increasing your shutter speed, widening your aperture, or increasing your ISO. It will depend on your shooting style, your equipment that you're using, and the results that you want to get, which of those that you're gonna play around with. For me personally, I like to set quite a wide aperture, probably the widest to start with, and then I'll start narrowing it until I get the depth of field that I want, and then I'll increase the ISO until I get the shutter speed that I want. Usually I don't go above ISO 6400, and I tend to get some results that are still usable at around that level. So if you're still struggling to get enough light into your camera, then tip number three is bring a tripod. You can get a travel tripod, they're really small these days, put it in your bag, bring it out with you, and you've got a really good solid stable base to put your camera on there, and you can get a really long shutter speed, up to 30 seconds for example, and you'll be surprised at just how much light that lets into the camera. You can probably bump your F number up to about F8, and you can get your ISOs down to really low numbers so you haven't got that noise and grain in your image. It's also really good for things like flowing water or moving vehicles and you can capture those light trails and you can get some really creative effects, so try it out.
So tip number four is consider using manual focus. All cameras struggle in low light with their autofocus system. The Z7's pretty good, I haven't really struggled tonight, but if it was any darker I probably would. And just using manual focus is going to take all that stress away and you know you're going to nail it every time. If you've got a mirrorless camera and you've got some magnification buttons, you can zoom in on your subject just to see it with more detail and then you can use your manual focus ring to really get in tight and get that subject in focus. Okay, so the final tip, tip number five, is to always shoot in RAW. If you're going to be using those high ISOs, you're going to get all that really nasty noise and grain in your image. And the easiest way to remove that is to always shoot in RAW. You've just got so much more detail in the image and more flexibility to remove that noise later in post-processing. Also, it means that you don't need to worry about things like white balance settings, and you've generally just got much more control when you come to edit your image later. So that's it for this video, if you found these tips useful or you've liked the video in any way please just give me a thumbs up down below, that really helps out with the channel. And a huge thank you to you if you watch every week, I really do appreciate that but if you are new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can just click down there on the big red button and that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week as a new video every Sunday morning at 10am UK time. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one but until then thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.